All right, we're live tonight on bourbonblog.com talking to my good friend for many years in the bourbon business, Jason Brauner. He is the founder and the master blender of Buzzard's Roost, and Buzzard's Roost has been doing a lot of really innovative products. Jason, this latest one is uh, Cigar Rye. Yeah, Tom, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And it's the cigar rye. Uh, this actually had, uh, it's, it's, there's been some barrels. Uh, that froze been... up on me there. Oh, okay. Can, can you hear me okay now? I can now. Okay. We're rolling. Yeah. All right. We're rolling. We'll try it again. Uh, Jason Bronner at Buzzard's Roost, uh, cigar rye. I, um, I really like this. Okay. Tell us what, just so we know, what is the cigar rye? Okay, if anybody's familiar with our product, we know that we, we use heavily toasted barrels, uh, and then we use a, a number one char exclusively. Uh, so what we've done with this one is we took uh, one of our heavily toasted barrels, charred it, number one char, but then we cold smoked it uh, with some Kentucky tobacco. Now, we took a few pointers from our peated rye, if anybody had ever had a sample of our peated rye, where we did the same thing. Heavy toast, number one char, and then we smoked the barrel with some uh, peat from Highland, uh, Scotland, and right. it gives off this little kind of a little bit of a scotchy flavor. So uh, the same idea carried over. If we can do it with Highland peat, then for sure we can do it with some Kentucky, good old Kentucky tobacco. Uh, and so that's where uh, cigar uh, rye was developed, and and uh, it's it's really unique, and and we're real happy with the turnout. We. Um, you know, we only did three barrels uh, first run and, and just to test the waters, uh, getting a lot of great response. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's definitely going to be a yearly uh, yearly release. I, I certainly hope so. And again, uh, it's Cigar Rye Whiskey. It just it just came out uh, the last few weeks. This is a product that is what states can we find this in, Jason? So this is a just supposed to be in Kentucky, but I think some uh, snuck out by request. I think New Mexico got a little bit. Um, some is being held back for New Orleans. And I don't know where else, maybe Tennessee. Uh, I don't think any went to Massachusetts. I'm not sure. It was supposed to be for Kentucky only. And then everybody started hearing about it and, and wanted uh, definitely a little sample. So we try to, hook everybody up and, and, and send it to where we, where we could, you know, first come first serve, I guess. So, but uh, everybody will be on the list next time. It will be uh, in every state that we're in. So we will make enough uh, to supply demand. Absolutely. It is uh, it, you'd get the tobacco notes, you'd get those rye notes again, this is cold smoked. So walk us through the process. What is the cold smoking of the tobacco? What does that look like? Well, we actually smoked the tobacco in a different vessel without getting too, uh, talking about it too much. And then we will circulate the smoke uh, through the barrel for a period of time, which I'm not at, at uh, liberty to say how long right. we do that. But um, that's the general process. We, you know, we smoke some tobacco leaves and we blow the smoke into the barrel. So at some point to get the smoke going, the tobacco leaves, they are on fire then. Is that right? Uh, there's different sources of heat that we use. Different sources of heat. Okay. So, oh, I'm just uh, curious, because I saw that cold smoked and I was like, what yeah. cold smoke? It, does, it, it doesn't necessarily catch fire. Okay. It, it somehow allows the tobacco to influence the barrel being pumped into the barrel for a period of time. It's in the barrel, and then you have this rye whiskey. You put it in, and that flavor is in the barrel. That's correct, and it'll sit wow. in that barrel anywhere. Just depends how it's reacting. Uh, I think these were in there about uh, two months. Two months. Wow. Two months. Yeah. And the rye whiskey is uh, what about a four or five year old whiskey? Yeah, it's a. Uh, I think it is a four year old uh, rye from from MGP. You know, we're sure, sure, totally transparent about that. Try to be transparent about everything we do. We just can't oh, give no, secrets to the, to the barrels and all that. 
I wouldn't yeah. want you to give them away. I understand. I was just, I was just curious what it all looked like because it really does taste delicious. Now, uh, what? Came, how did this idea come about? I mean, what? How did you say let's 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 influence tobacco? What was? Well, we're you know, I think we're a pretty innovative company as far as is looking at some different wood finishes uh, without you know what I say kind of not really cheating, but but you know, we're, we're trying to work with the barrel, not with old used barrels. I mean, these are brand new barrels that we uh, treat a little bit differently than everybody else. Like I said, we're number one char exclusively and uh, our heavy toasting process really brings a lot of the sugars to the surface. So, um, you know, it's just, a, it's just a different way of doing things. Uh, as far as traditional wise, uh, and we we back this up with research that we've done, um, not that I've done personally, but Independent Stave has done, and I've right. been there along the process, uh, you know, learning as I go, and uh, it was just kind of a, a natural thing. I mean, you know, people talk about, you know, you're doing everything with bourbon barrels, right? So we're we're. Uh, you know, 70% of the flavor comes from the barrel. So we thought since the peated, uh, the peated worked really well, that what more natural than a Kentucky tobacco. And we both, you know, everybody likes to smoke cigars every once in a while. And, and uh, we figured it would be a good pairing because there's going to be some of these subtle hints that you're going to get with the whiskey. It's it's already. I mean, a lot of your whiskeys obviously are already a great pairing for cigars, but this one has that backbone. It has that uh, nice, like the kiss of tobacco, especially on the end there. I get it really. You know, I get it towards the beginning. It's kind of sweet and creamy on the middle, and then at the end, it really lifts up. And I'm tasting that um, that beautiful tobacco. And this again is is uh, Kentucky tobacco. Um, did you have a type of tobacco or a certain? Uh, farm you were looking for as far as what you wanted to put on this? Uh, no, but we we definitely in the future are going to look into that, narrow it down. We may end up at some point uh, partnering with the cigar company and maybe, I don't know, finding some wrappers that we might like and uh, and, and maybe smoking a barrel with some, some uh, a company that we like and maybe do a, a collaboration. That's just a thought, uh, but yeah. you know, we'll, we'll continue to, uh, uh, experiment with this. We're real happy with what, uh, we've put out so far. And I think a lot of people are as well. Uh, so we think we're on the right track, but yeah, it, it, it'll definitely be something that we'll explore down the road. Never seen anything quite like this or tasted anything quite like, and again, if you're a Rye fan, make sure you look for this, uh, mainly in Kentucky, but, uh, Jason is going with buzzards roost into so many states now, yeah, and I have one not too far away too. <laughs> you're getting you're getting um, into so many places. You're in five states right now. Yeah, you're, so, um, yeah we um, Kentucky, Massachusetts, uh, Ohio, Santa Fe, uh, New Mexico. Yep. Yeah. We're working on. Let's see. We've got Tennessee is waiting for their shipment uh, louisiana we've got just the very last paperwork to get there uh done we're going into chicago so illinois uh north carolina florida georgia uh we've been talking with new york so and we did just ship to canada we shipped uh, a bunch of whiskey to canada so you know kind of looking forward to that as well You've Hit won the inter international market. International, yes. You've won some great awards. You've done that. You have the, the is it the very small batch and the single barrel that are always available? Is that right? Well, and, and both of those have changed, Tom. We, we've okay. taken that. Um, we didn't want, <coughs> excuse me, we didn't want our single barrels uh, to conflict with. We're doing a lot of store picks, so we do have a barrel program out there. Uh, so we didn't want our single barrel to conflict with maybe a store's single barrel pick. So we eliminated our single barrel personally, right. but you can get store picks. And the small batch actually has become char one. So uh, if you see the label, it will say char one. Char one. Uh, yeah. And so we kind of want to own that as far as being the, 
kind of some of the first people to, to really fool with char one. So our small batch became char one. Our single barrel is going to a single barrel program. And okay. then we, we still have uh, the toasted rye. We have um, cigar rye. We've got the peated rye, which is going to change to smoked because the peated scared a lot of people off. Right. So that'll be our smoked barrel. The smoked uh, barrel. And we still smoke it with Pete, but we're just not telling anybody. <laughs> we won't tell. I mean, we're not trying to cover it up. It's on the label, but right, but it, right. It is. Far, it does sound better to some people. I get it. The, the marketing uh, department got involved with that. So, um, and then we've got our, our barrel strength rye. So now we've uh, also we've come out with a couple of bourbons. We have a barrel strength bourbon. Excellent. We, we have a French toasted oak bourbon. Wow which is really cool. And then we're just going to do an American Oak toasted bourbon. But the French Oak was a little project we did. Uh, ungodly expensive. If you any French Oak barrels are four times what a normal beer cost. Wow. Um, but it's, it's really cool. There's a lot going on in there because it's uh, the, 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 they're a little bit more tannic and it's a little bit tighter, uh, tighter wood grain. So it, it, it seems to, uh, it drinks a little bit tighter, but it takes a little bit longer to open up. But right. the French French toasted oak uh, bourbon's got a lot going on. It's pretty cool. So, and and that that French toast uh, barrel is that is that a secondary barrel or what is the um, yeah the yeah most of our stuff now is uh, it, it's all going to be secondary. secondary. What's uh, that and, done to the bourbon? What do you what notes do you get on that? It's I mean. Tom, it's 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 hard to describe. It's it's a beautiful right. thing. If you can take a, you know, these it's got some kind of stone fruits, but then it's also got these toasted sugars with it, mm. and it's it's just a little bit of caramel, but it's it's just um, it's got a lot going on. And Sounds amazing. Yeah, I I really enjoy that one. Uh, and that'll be kind of a limited time thing too. We'll come back out with that, and it, that's been really popular as well. Um, so, you know, we're just kind of, uh, you know, right now we're secondary. Once we, we, we are contracted to do some new make here beginning of next year, and mm. then it'll go straight in our number one char barrels. So, so you're, you're, you're going to be doing a different, when you say you're doing an, your own new make, what are you, what, what are you? Uh, we'll be getting some new make and we'll be, it'll be contracted and it'll be our recipe, our, your our recipe completely. Okay. Yeah. Our recipe from, uh, uh, you know, field to field to glass, it'll be. Uh, our grain bill, our yeast, and our barrels from the get-go. Right from the beginning. And again, uh, everything you've done has been so interesting and unique as you experiment with different projects, with different uh, barrels. Uh, you and I, obviously, we, you know, being in the business for a while, looking at what you've done here, are you, I mean, there are a, a number of distilleries. And of course, barrels do matter in a big way to... Um, all distilleries, but are you surprised there haven't been more barrel experimentations the last 10 years or so, 10, 15 years during the boom, as you, as you look at what you're doing? Well, you know, if it, uh, and, and, and it's starting to break out, but, but right. independent stave is really the one pushing all of this. Right. And, and if you think about, you know, one of the big seven or whatever you want to call it, the big boys, right? it's hard to veer from 200 years of tradi tradition, you know? Right when they're using three and four char, it's like, Oh, well, all of a sudden we're going to use a one char that, you know, I don't believe you can convince the sales team or anybody that's in charge to do that. You know, that'd be like the new Coke or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so we, you know, we're a small uh, fledgling company, startup company, and, and we're able to, to do that. We we're able to move in that direction. And, uh, and what's cool is we're at the right place at the right time because I don't have to pay for that research. You know, I'm just, I'm just here utilizing it and right. independent staves, you know, they've got all the labs, they've got the money, they've got the people. Uh, it's just unbelievable. And, and, and we're able to uh, use that. What I think is to our advantage. Yes. Yes. Independent stave, uh, obviously doing a wonderful job and, and yourself as you've teamed up. I mean, this, uh, the experiments, the creations have been beautiful uh, I'm sure you have more on the way. Any any new other ones that you're able to give us a hint on or, or a tease forward to? Well, uh, not right at the moment. I'm not at liberty to say what we're doing, but we do have some experiments going right now. Uh, the main thing on our plate is we're opening a tasting room down uh, 
on Main Street here in Louisville. And so we're trying to get through permitting and that's going to be a cool educational part. We'll really get into uh, when you show up, you really be able to get into one on one of what the wood does and how we utilize it. And it all makes sense uh, when you look at it on spider graphs and bar graphs and uh, we'll be drinking some whiskey, too. So it'll be fun learning. Uh, cool tasting room. We've got bought a little doubler. So we're actually going to do some experiments with the doubler. We'll, we'll take some take some first run, uh, clean it up, and then put it in our charred barrels. So that'll be this year. And then next year, we'll be doing it on a bigger scale. Excellent. And again, that will be, that tasting room will be where again? Uh, it's 624 West Main Street, if everything goes right. <laughs> if, 624 if we get, West Main, yeah. they're in downtown Louisville. Yeah. Right, and that right, might be right, right there in the heart of Whiskey Row. Yeah, that might be by the end of the year we'll be seeing that. We're hoping to be open by summer. By summer, uh, wow. Yeah, and, and we're just really waiting on the permit to pull the trigger and, and turn loose on it. So, so uh, again, Buzzard's Roost Whiskey is the place to be. Uh, you're, tell us again the states you're in and or you may go into later this year. I'm seeing some questions about that. Uh, Kentucky, Massachusetts, uh, New Mexico, Tennessee, Illinois. Ohio, Georgia, North Carolina, Florida, Louisiana, Arkansas. I forgot Arkansas the first time around. And uh, also New York. And we're in Canada. Excellent. All over. You can find it. And uh, keep on watching buzzardsroostwhiskey.com and them on social to see what they're doing. The more I taste this, uh, yes, yeah, we can pose our cigars with this. This could work, actually. Yeah, I, I know. I actually, um, I've got because I know you have Kentucky tobacco on this. I got some Kentucky fire cured from Drew Estate, and I'm going to light up here in a little while Ooh. to pair with this because I want to put some Kentucky tobacco, little little mixture. But this is, um, I do get a lot of those tobacco, and, and I'm smelling it dry, smelling this, looking for notes. Right? What do you have? What kind of cigar do you have there? What is this? Is an Alec Bradley uh, Project nice Forty? Cigar. Yes, those are very nice. I like those. You know, so you're talking about Kentucky tobacco. And it, yeah. I don't know where I picked them up. It seemed like it was in Bardstown or somewhere. But do you remember or did you ever see a, a Kentucky cheroot? I've heard of these. I, I'm not sure. Were bitty, these a while back? Little, yeah, a little bitty, like almost a cigarello type thing. I was smoking them for a while. And I, I have no idea where I got them. And, and, and I'd like to get some more, but I don't remember you know, I'm going to do yeah. some research for you. And if anybody listening, because I know we have some cigar fans listening, if anybody yeah, knows, be, uh, yeah, they're a little bitty and about that, they're probably, you know, about, where am I, about that long and just yeah. real, you know, like a mini Mac or something. Yes. Yes. Tell, tell Jason. And, and of course, Jason's going to be looking for some more ideas on the, uh, the tobacco front. So I'm sure he's always open for, um, ideas uh mikecigars.com is what brian hart brian hovey is saying maybe you can find him on mikecigars.com he's saying go there so brian thank you for watching everybody watching make sure you like this share this whether you're watching on youtube twitter facebook we always appreciate you all sharing this uh to help spread the name of um good brands that we just love like buzzard's roost which again the fact you're going to have presence on whiskey road there that's cool i mean you you all are really you're, you're, you're growing and growing. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the name of the game. I mean, stop growing, you die, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're, we're we're more hands. we just want to be able to, you know, get the word out and uh, we're, you know, we're going to have a little retail shop there. We'll have our own bar. Uh, like I said, educational mm -hmm. rooms, it, it, it's going to be cool. Be watching for that. Be watching for all of their whiskeys and out now. Um, you did how you did what, how many barrels worth or do you know how much really this is three barrels three barrels on this run three uh, barrels so what this might be if you see it on the shelf you might want to grab it because it probably won't be there long fairly limited release right fairly limited fairly limited we'll be back next year but uh man this is uh one of the most interesting rides i've had in a, in a very long time the tobacco notes it's everything from cigar to i get some pipe tobacco i get some fruit behind it it's it's a variety of notes. Um, yeah, there's definitely some some fruit in it for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's really lovely. Yeah, Jason, 
Always a pleasure seeing you. I'm sure we'll see you again uh, during Kentucky Derby next week. Oh, yeah. I'll be around for sure. We will see Jason around, and uh, hopefully we'll see you. Tell us down below if you're going to be uh, at Kentucky Derby. We'll be doing a lot of coverage on Bourbon Blog, so make sure you keep subscribed to this channel to watch our Derby coverage. Always a pleasure, my friend. Good to see you. Tom, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure, and, and uh, keep drinking. <laughs> All right. We will. Cheers. All right. Cheers. See you. Thanks. Thanks.